Okay, so uh, this video is going to be about gas pressure and um, the laws, like gas laws that are related. It's mostly aimed at GCSE, so if you're doing A level, you will need to do it in a little bit more detail. Um, first of all, I want us to think about uh, what we actually mean by gas pressure. Um, and this is mostly explained by the kinetic um, model uh, or kinetic theory. And this is the idea that uh, we have particles that move freely in a gas. Um, it's mostly empty space, um, that they have a range of speeds and that there are collisions and that these collisions are um, between the particles and with the container. And actually, um, it's this these collisions with the container that we really want to be thinking about because this exerts a force. It might be a tiny force, but it's a force nonetheless. And hopefully, you know, probably from key stage three, that pressure is a uh, force over area. So the area that we're talking about is the wall of the container and the force that's being exerted is the collision um, of the particles that are moving. So one of the things you need to uh, know about is the relationship between pressure and volume. Um, and you've probably done an experiment maybe with a closed syringe where if you try to push the plunge, like plunger in, um, that you can feel the pressure as you're trying to decrease um, the volume. So if we uh, decrease the volume, then we increase the pressure. Um, and so what this means is they are inversely proportional. Um, so we, we get an equation from this. Uh, the, the condition is if the temperature is fixed. We'll come on to why that's the case in a minute. Um, and the equation that you get given in your equation, uh, like booklet at the front, um, is pressure times volume equals constant. So what that means is if you've got a starting pressure and a starting volume, you can calculate the constant for that scenario. Uh, and then if it gives you, say, a new volume, you can use the constant and the volume to then working out what the, the finishing pressure would be. So let's, let's do an example and just make up some numbers. If we've got the starting pressure, which I'm just going to call P1, um, is let's say atmospheric pressure, which is 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Um, and then we've got a volume, which, okay, 500 centimetres cubed. Um, and then let's say that we don't know what the um, finishing pressure is going to be, but we know that the finishing volume is 200 centimetres cubed. Well, we're, we're reducing the volume, so we would assume that the pressure um, is... Uh, going to increase um, but we can actually calculate this so um, if we do P1 V1 so pressure times volume uh, is equal to a constant so our pressure is 1 times 10 to the 5 times 500 so 1 times 10 to the 5 times 500 uh, is 5 times 10 to the 7 um, don't worry about units for now. We're just uh, we're just looking at it as a constant, so it doesn't really matter um, for this what our units are. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter if you're using centimeters cubed instead of say meters cubed. Um, you uh, as long as you're using the same unit with the with the next one. Uh, so our ending pressure um, is what we want to find out. We're multiplying applying it by v1 equals constant. Um, so we know that our constant is 5 times 10 to the 7. And we know that our, oops, sorry. Uh, we know that our ending volume is 200 centimetres cubed. Um, so then we just need to, to calculate this, so rearrange it. So it will be 5 times 10 to the 7 divided by 200. So we can do this here. And so then we can work out that P2 is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 5. Pascals. So we can see straight away we expected our pressure to be higher um, and, and it was higher so, uh, so that's how, how we work it out. So the other link with this um, is temperature. 
Um, hopefully you've done in chemistry uh, things to do with um, the effect of temperature. You know, if we're increasing temperature, we're increasing the kinetic energy of particles, so they're going to, to move at a faster average speed. So it all kind of links back to that, really. Um, so you constantly think about what, what particles are actually doing, whether there's going to be more collisions, whether there's going to be less collisions, what impact that will have. Um, so the temperature is going to affect the pressure and it's also going to affect the volume. So when we're thinking about the actual relationships, we need to be good scientists about this and only be changing one thing. So if we uh, have a fixed volume, so we're only looking at how pressure and temperature are related to each other. Um, if we decrease the temperature, then we are going to decrease the pressure which makes sense if you think about, again, the kinetic model. So the temperature is decreased, so therefore the kinetic uh, energy of the particles is going to be decreased, so there's going to be fewer collisions, um, they're going to be less frequent um, with, with the wall of the container, so therefore that's what our pressure is. So if there's fewer, fewer collisions, there's a smaller force over the same area because the volume is the same, so therefore the pressure is going to decrease. And similarly, if we have uh, a fixed pressure, it's the same pattern. If we decrease the temperature, then our volume decreases. So you might have seen this. Um, they might have done a demonstration at school, perhaps, uh, where you sometimes get like a balloon um, and put that. Uh, in a freezer and, and the volume um, will decrease. Um, there are two equations again that link in with this that you also get given in your booklet. Um, um, so pressure over temperature uh, is equal to a constant and then volume over temperature is equal to a constant. The thing you do have to remember is um, pressure over temperature is equal to a constant provided that the, the volume is fixed. Volume over temperature is equal to a constant provided that the pressure is fixed. So if, if you've got like a six mark question about this, you need to make sure that, that you are um, talking about the assumption that you're fixing one of those. And it's not always easy to make sure that those other values are fixed because these three things are, are interlinked so much. But we do have to make an effort to do that uh, to ensure that our results are valid. So where this links in is... Um, when we start graphing this, if, for example, we were looking at either pressure and temperature or volume and temperature, um, and we, we graph this on um, a set of axes, uh, so let's say that this is the temperature in degrees Celsius, and this y-axis could be either volume or, or pressure, so I'm, I'm not going to label it. We know that if we decrease the temperature, we decrease the pressure, and we're, we're going to end up with a line that looks something like this, okay? Uh, so we can see that they're proportional because um, as one increases, the other increases, as one decreases, the other, other decreases. Um, and actually, if we uh, continued this on, so if we extrapolated, um, we don't have this data from the classroom uh, because we're talking about very low temperatures here. The point at which um, the temperature or the pressure would become zero um, we know is minus 273 degrees Celsius. Uh, and this is termed absolute zero. Um, um, it's theoretical um, because uh, we can get things very close to, to absolute zero, but not quite at absolute zero. And, and this would be zero on what's called the Kelvin scale. It's not degrees Kelvin, it's just zero Kelvin. Um, and the Kelvin scale and the uh, kind of Celsius uh, scale, you need to be able to convert from one to the other. So it's just a case of either adding uh, 273 or minusing 273, depending on which way you're going. Um, the other graph uh, it's worth having a look at um, or making sure that you're familiar with um, is back to pressure and volume. Um, I forgot to draw it earlier, sorry. Uh, that if we had volume and pressure, that you'd end up with a graph that looks something like that. Maybe not quite so curved. Um, so you need to be able to recognize these. You can do exactly the same thing with these uh, equations, uh, with pressure and temperature in the constant, and the same with volume and temperature in the constant, as you've done over this side. So I'm not going to demonstrate um, those again, because it's just the, the same uh, sort of ratio, basically. Um, where this links in, uh, in P7, 
for OCR uh, is with the star's life cycle. So that's that's how they bring this in. So thinking about um, having to explain uh, the various stages of a star's life cycle based on what's happening to the particles. Therefore, how's that inf uh, affecting the temperature? Um, how's that affecting the pressure? How's that affecting the, the volume? Um, the, the most kind of common example really is thinking about uh, the start of um, a star's life cycle. So when it's a protostar, gravity starting to pull the gas together more and more and more. Um, as it's pulling the gas together, it's increasing the pressure, so it's compressing the gas, which is going to increase the temperature. As the temperature like, increases further, it eventually gets hot enough to start fusing those particles together, and once the fusion starts occurring, that's when you've got your main sequence star.